Hey guys, welcome back to the e-commerce with Golang backend project series. We are in our token gen file and we have to cover these two functions, validate token and update all tokens. So for the validate token function, uh, what does it take? It basically accepts a token, right? This function is going to be used whenever a, a user tries to use their JW token to interact with an API. We want to send that token to this function to check if the token is even valid or not, right? So signed token. Sign token, let's keep the T small and it's of type string. What this returns is it returns uh, it returns claims which is of type sign details. Now sign details is something that we have created together in as a struct, right? These are the claims. And that's what it returns out here from here. And it can also return a message which is a string. Okay. Now here, what you'll say is you'll say JWT dot parse with claims too. Now your JWT token consists of claims because we use the claims to create the token, right? That's how we created the token because we said new with claims, create the token with this method, use these claims exact to create this token. So this token only we'll be using and using the function called parse with claims to be able to um, parse the claims from that token. Whatever we get back from this function, we're going to store and open. And to this, we'll pass the signed token. And we'll pass the signed details. We'll also pass our function, which will have a token of type jw.token. And this function also has a definition. It just, okay, so before the definition, I want to tell you that this returns an interface or an error depending on if something goes wrong it will return an error and this simply returns the secret key and now you want to handle this error out here. So you'll say if error is not equal to nil, you'll say msg is equal to error dot error. msg being the message that you are sending back from this uh, function, right? So that will become equal to error dot error. And you'll return from this function. And you'll say token dot claims to check if uh, all claims are okay and based on your signed details that you've created you'll use the comma okay syntax this is a popular syntax for golang the comma okay syntax and you can check which is okay is a flag that's returned here uh, it's a boolean value you can check if it's uh, you know true or false if it's false we'll say the message is invalid and we'll return so we have checked the claims, right? And while parsing, we have also handled the error. Now the last condition that you want to check is the expires time, uh, expires at time. So if the expires at time, which is found in the claims, right? In the claims, you find which you are able to extract from here. You'll find the expires at uh, flag because you have created an expires at flag out here, right? As part of the standard claims. So here's you want to check if the um, expired alt is not less than the local time. Dot. If it's less, then that means obviously the expires at has already happened, right? Because it's less than the time that is right now. So it's already happened. So you'll say the token is already expired. And you return from this function and obviously this needs to have an if and um, you will return claims comma msg okay this unix the us capital so now everything should look all right okay 
So now the update all tokens function. This takes in your signed token, which is a string, and your signed refresh token, which is again a string, takes in a user ID, which is a string. So firstly, let's create our context. So context dot with timeout, context dot background, comma hundred multiplied by time dot seconds, which is hundred seconds. Okay. So we've created our CTX variable, which is basically timeout context. And we'll create another uh, variable called updated object variable, which is of type primitive dot D. And we'll keep updating our things that we need to, uh, sorry, appending all the things that we need to update with this in this update object. So firstly, first thing that we want to append, so we'll say update object is equal to append. We'll obtain append to our update object the token which we'll get in the signed token argument that has been received in this function and we'll also append the refresh uh, signed refresh token so you copy and paste this and here refresh the, uh, change this with the refresh token and change this with signed refresh token out here, um, you'll create an updated at value time dot parse time dot RFC 339 comma time dot now dot format. Now this updated at flag or uh, value will also be appended to uh, your update object. So you can simply copy this and paste it again. And instead of token, it will be updated at. And the value will be updated underscore at. Great. So you want to use the absurd flag and you want to set it to true. You want to create a variable called filter is equal to bson.m user id equal to user id. So all the things that we have invited into this function as arguments, sign token, sign refresh token, user ID, all have been used till now, right? So user ID we need as the filter. Uh, we have appended already the token and the sign token, sign token and sign refresh token. We have also created an updated add value. So now we'll create our options. We'll say options dot update options. Guys, in, in case you're getting confused with what we're doing here, we are just creating a query we're querying, querying, creating a mongodb query and that's this is why we need this absurd and filter and options okay soon you will i'll write the query soon and then you'll understand actually maybe um, right now you're not able to understand but there's nothing uh, new here actually okay so you have your options and then you have your user data dot update user data you get from this um, this user data is what we are talking about, right? Which is database or user data, Mongo collection, which is basically your user's collection. That's what you're having reference to. Your user collection you're having reference to from this variable called user data. You're using the update one function given to you by MongoDB. And you'll say json.d and we'll handle the error also here. But before that, let's write the code out here. So bison.d and then here you'll say key equal to, um, actually we'll have one more bracket. So we'll have key equal to dollar set comma values 
update object comma comma and pass the options now if you've ever seen an update one query with a mongodb uh, with mongodb so mongodb gives you access to update one query right it takes in dollar set which basically is uh, saying that set the value right with this new value which is updated object and that's what you are doing right now you also pass the options there and now you will defer cancel and you'll say if error is not equal to new log dot panic error and you'll return successfully we have updated uh, in our mongodb all these tokens all the values for the tokens okay for that particular user id you had the sign token and the sign refresh token standard procedure guys uh, we've just updated that uh, user uh, you know with this updated object which will have basically the sign token sign refresh token updated at you always want to maintain the updated at right in case you're wondering what this is uh, go to your user and see that you have this updated at which you always want to keep uh, updating based on whenever you update this user struct right and now you have updated the token and the refresh token and then you mentioned the updated at so it's quite consistent with that and then you passed in the filter you passed the user id and for that user id basically you're saying um, change this you know these change these values so that's why you passed the update object so i hope this is clear um, I hope this you're learning a lot from this project. Everything is going really smooth. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video where we'll start worrying about the middleware. Okay, we'll start worrying about the middleware in the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.